Welcome back to the Early Retirement Podcast, and this is going to be a different episode for most of you. And the reason I say that is you guys know I don't have a lot of guests on the show. In fact, I've only had one guest on the show before, and the reason for that is I want you guys to have tremendous value anytime I talk or I bring on a guest to talk, and that's exactly why I'm bringing on today Dr. Donatello, who I'm going to introduce in just a second, but he is the expert on everything when it comes to prioritizing your health and knowing what you should do to make sure that you don't look back and go, oh my God. I've got two, three, four, five, 10, 20, 50 million bucks, but what good is it now? I'm not taking that to my grave. And I wish I spent more along the way. I wish I felt better along the way. And too often, in my opinion, advisors just talk about 401ks and Roth IRAs and less about how do you actually have fulfillment in retirement? And also, how do you make sure you feel good the whole time? So Dr. Donatello, thank you again for coming on the show. I'll give you the, the real intro in a second, but I want to say thank you for taking the time to do this. I'm excited to be here, man. I got I got double your life. You're 27, <laughs> four, right? So yeah. uh, I'm not that good at math, but I know the double 27 is my age, and there's so much that happened in between that we can share. So I'm yeah. excited to talk about it. Love it, and I'm excited too. So I want to just hop right in, and doctor, you know, 30 years of doing this, and you've probably seen everything that you could imagine. What are the biggest tips right off the bat that my listeners who you know, they're between 50, 65. Some people are, of course, younger than that, but they want to make sure that they are doing everything possible to put themselves in the best position financially. That's why they first reach out to me, but they also want to make sure that they feel good. And too often, like I said, that's overlooked. What are just some major health tips right off the bat that most people need to look at that they aren't doing? Yeah, you know, we could talk about health and diet and, and how to stay fit really forever but what i want to touch base on is what makes them happy because really what it comes down to is you know they want to retire and what they're saying is they want to go from a w2 job to having enough money to do what they really want to do what they're really saying is they want to be happy so mm -hmm. if you're listening to this i'm 54 i don't see myself retiring ever i want to do things that keep me intellectually stimulated and surround myself with really smart um, really people that are just do what I love. So this is, I want to talk about this. In 1938, Harvard University came up with a study and their intent was to look and see what made people most happy. And they mm -hmm. followed 730 people for 85 years, Ari. All right, wow. this is the biggest study they've ever done. Multi-generation, they followed them. Every two years, they did a survey. And you know what they found? Mm -hmm. The people that were the most happy had the best social connections. OK, so mm. if you were to ask me really longevity wise, and we can talk about longevity. We do a lot of stem cell therapy and we have a, we have a lot of metabolic reset weight loss programs to keep people metabolically healthy. But I think it's what it comes down to is taking your your physical, chemical and emotional stressors and minimizing them. And when it comes to being happy, according to the Harvard study, emotional stress I think is from having toxic friends around you. I know we're going in a different direction, right? But having toxic friends, people that if you share your wins with them, right? And they don't support those wins and you feel like you have to hold back. Um, and everyone listening, you, you have a toxic friend. Those are the people that are going to keep you less happy and you're going to enjoy your quote unquote retirement less to keep those people around. So I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, no, that's interesting. What can people expect, those that are working right now, because you hit a big word there, which is social. A lot of people listening, they're working a job and they're going, hey, I, I kind of like this, but you know, there's going to be a day where I'm no longer working and I'm not going to have that social network. How do you stay happy when you're no longer at work? Yeah, a great question. I think that you're at work how many hours a week? You have 168 hours in a week and you're at work maybe or 35 to 50, let's say, mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of hours. And I think that there's so many ways to connect with people and, and that really vibrate on your frequency that are in the same energy path as you. What, whatever that is, um, you know, the reason pickleball has taken off in an older crowd, which is great for our stem cell therapy, because um, people wreck their knees and hips. But what's happened, if you ever play pickleball, it's super social, right? So whatever it is, if you're if you're playing cards or if you like to quilt, uh, there's a million ways with the internet to connect with people. So don't wait until you're retired to form that social group. You know, the five people that you surround yourself with. And think about that. If you're driving in the car or listening to this right now, think about the five best friends you have, right? And again, back to toxicity and good friends, try to identify really 
do they do those people support what you love and, and love to do? Um, and if they don't, it's going to be really hard when you quote unquote retire and have even more free time. So I think my advice would be to to really sit back, grab a grab a pen and paper, and really write down what what do you love to do? Do you like to you like to ski, hike, surf, metal detect? My father loves to metal detect. He's eighty years old still. <laughs> So it's what you love and surround yourself with as many people as possible. Ideally, younger people, right? Mm -hmm. That's like that's like an investment, right? If you're getting older and you, you know, you're 80, 90, you want to keep people younger than you around you energetically. Um, you know, the gym you go to, surround yourself with like-minded people. Yeah. Wonderful. And a lot of the new listeners, you won't know this, but the, the returning listeners, you know that when I give you my free ebook, which of course you can get in the description of this podcast episode, or if you're listening on YouTube, that free ebook, I ask you a question. I go, what are you most excited to never have to deal with once you're retired? And some of you say waking up. Some of you say commuting. Some of you say, Ari, I'm actually just scared to death to retire because I don't know what I'm going to do. So that might blow your mind, Dr. Donatello, but a lot of people are scared to death because they don't know what they're going to do. So you mentioned pickleball right there. Are there other things that as a doctor, you're saying, hey, these are things that I think people need to know about if you've kind of put 30 years into this job and, and now the next 30 years are scary. Yeah, well, I'll get a story for you, okay? Because I know you like stories. I used to be a chiropractor way back when, and for 20 years, had 10,000 patients. We had a place called the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. We're on the coastline north of Boston, and the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, people would start working there when they were 18. It was a great government job, and they would mm -hmm. work their way up, and it was consistent. I worked with a lot of them, and I would see guys that would, almost across the board, when they got to be about 58 to 62, they retired. And there was this one guy, he was so excited about retiring, um, he had a garage built and he just wanted to sit in his beautiful leather chair and he bought this big screen TV and he went from moving around the plant for all those years, physically active to sitting on his butt, watching TV with no friends and died six months later with, and he was the richest guy at his funeral because he never spent a dime. So what I would say is don't be the richest person at your funeral. Um, also, the, to, so it goes back to, longevity and the number one thing that's that slows down longevity or actually what people die from Ari as they get older mm -hmm. is they become less stable they become weak and they fall and they break a hip or worse what they'll do is they'll twist their knee twist the hip maybe hurt their back or neck and now they're going to PT they're on medication and they aren't active anymore so Really, the reality is once you stop being active, you put weight on around the middle, you slow down, your metabolism slows down, your immune system slows down, right? Look at the people that died from COVID, right? 82% yeah. of them were overweight. So the, the, what happens is you really want to take, be strong, be stable, not fall over because when you fall over and you break a hip, if you're in the hospital, you're laying on your back, you become supine. And what happens is this, pneumonia takes over and that kills more people pneumonia from being wow. inactive your lungs aren't able to pass um you know, fluids they become stagnant and that's what kills more people second and pneumonia secondary to falls is the way most people die in this country which is they're not told this yeah yeah Th that is powerful i hope you all just heard that do not die the richest person at your funeral you don't get to take that with you and it's really hard to do all of this with confidence, of course, unless you have a plan. So a lot of you already know this, but that's why I do what I do is I want to make sure your finances are in order so you can go spend and not go, oh my gosh, if the markets went down, am I not going to be okay? I want you to make sure you're going to be okay, but I also want to make sure that you are prioritizing your health and you're not staying at a job that is not healthy for you. And I'm not talking financially healthy. I'm talking life healthy. Because what you just said there, doctor, I think is just so important that most people overlook because it's easier to just keep working. It's like, I already know this. I know my coworkers. I know I wake up at 5 a.m. and I know I drive, then I do that. It's harder to actually do what you just said, which is take a second, take a pen, take a piece of paper. What do I want to do? That's actually more intimidating to most. So what you just brought up, a few really important things regarding how most people end up passing, never fun to talk about, but important. What are some of the things that people can start doing today, literally at work, to make sure that they are prioritizing their future, their self? You know, I think that it, the, walking is super important, right? I think that a lot of people have free time during the day, but their mindset is like, well, I can't get out and walk. Um, nowadays, post-COVID, uh, 
you know, a lot of people work from home. The bosses are much more apt to let you go and, and you know, take time walking while you're working. So this is what I would say. Um, get AirPods. Put AirPods in. And if you have a call, so during the week, a lot of people, and this isn't everybody, some of you are working on plants or physically working on things, but if you are, and I do this all the time, I walk about 10 to 20,000 steps a day, I'll identify certain calls. Now I'm my own boss, right? Um, but I identify certain calls that I don't need Zoom involved. And I put my earphones in, I go to a place where there's good reception and I'll walk through the whole talk and get my exercise in at the same time. I mountain bike all the time on calls all the time so it, it, it drives people crazy sometimes because they're like what are you doing oh they, in fact they know i'm out in the woods right <laughs> but, uh, you know i, I ride there, there's some places Ari, where you would where i ride up here in new hampshire where it's like deadly and i'm on a business call and they have no idea i'm like on the edge of a cliff um so again back to the original um advice is walk as much as you can and see if you can multitask with some headphones in your ears or you just just walk more podcasts, you know, listening to find people like you, right? Um, go out, don't sit at your desk, walk, figure out a way to get out there and, and uh, be active. I think that's a creative idea that most people overlook. And, and we couldn't do that without COVID. And, and that to your point, doctor, is most people, a lot of people, I'll say, are, are at home right now. And they're just really struggling with this idea that my home is here, my work is here, and they don't get out and walk, even though the reality is it's not easy. But if they ask their boss, hey, can I, one with permission, of course, go and do a walk on, on that call? They're probably not going to say no. Now, some things, of course, you have to be at your desk for, but I think you're right. And I think they just need to hear it. Wow. Yeah, I do need to go, go walk. And that's easy. It's not saying, hey, you got to go do CrossFit or you're going to not going to no. be okay. You know what I mean? So if you're, especially if you're, if you've been around, if you're 45, like you said, a lot of your listeners are 50 to 60, mm -hmm. they're probably in a position where they make the rules. And I, I, if you're doing eight Zoom calls a day, you don't have to do Zoom. It can be a phone. You make the rules. Say, all right, this call and, and write it in your book. Set your schedule up at least three, four times a week. You're going to be able to get out and walk for an hour if you set your schedule. So again, it's all mindset. Um, be be proactive, not reactive to other people, right? And um, you know, take a stand. This is what I'm doing, and you guys have to react to me. I'm going to go walk. I'm going to do whatever it is. Beautiful. What other stories, as you know, I, I, a lot of my listeners love stories. And I think, of course, you have a, a plethora to share. What other stories do you go, wow, I, I just would love your listeners to hear from people who are in their 50s and 60s who have done it really well. And then maybe even some other stories from those who haven't done it well that go, wow, I wish I would have done some of these other things. Um, you know, what, what pops in my head, one of the things that I want to talk to people about, because we work with a lot of people that are overweight, that are heavy. Um, one of the things that I try to get across to people all the time is that in, is it when it comes to joint pain and that's keeping you from being active, right? So we, we had a lady that was 310 pounds, a very active lady. She was actually a CFO in a company, but she let her weight get out of the way all, in the way. All she did was work. And she came in, we have over two to 3000 people that go through our weight loss program. We have health coaching, functional medicine, nurse practitioners. We have an MD, um, but the big and 80 percent of those are virtual. Um, so the they're from all over the country. But this one lady, she was 310 pounds. And what she did was I we brought her in the office and, and she went upstairs. We had to go upstairs by mistake. We should have kept it on the first floor because all right, she couldn't walk very well. Mm -hmm. And her knees were just wrecked. Right. So people think, well, it's because she's 310 pounds. No. It's because of the inflammation systemically in her body. So what happened was she went through our weight loss program and most people lose 20 to 40 pounds just by stabilizing insulin, getting their metabolism back on track and eating the right foods, right? So the story goes that one week in, this lady walked up the stairs. She was down 10 pounds, okay, which is pretty normal, but she still weighed 300 pounds. She still had this mechanical 300 pounds of force on her knees and she went right up the steps and she had very little pain right? Because the inflammation was gone so quickly. So if you eat, so back to simple advice, right? If I, if I don't eat bread or sugary things, I lose about seven to eight pounds in a week. All right. So I, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I try to avoid that. Um, but if, if really in short, if you're eating, you know, bread products and beer or beer is really bad, dairy, 
um, consistently throughout the week, sugary stuff. If you're, if you're going to Starbucks and you're getting, I don't know if you know, but the, if you just order a, a coffee at Starbucks, they put four pumps of sugar, four pumps of cream in without you even asking. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you're doing that on a consistent basis, you're going to create inflammation. And if you wonder why your joints are killing you, um, the older we get, the more our, we respond to inflammation in, in negative ways. Um, so I know that if I don't eat well, I'll feel my thumb. I broke it mountain biking. I'll feel my thumb secondary to not eating properly um, or having like an espresso or martini or two, which I don't like doing, but occasionally I will. Um, yeah. So what I'm, I guess the moral of the story is how you eat directly affects pain in your joints. And the whole thing is if you want to go into early retirement, you uh, you don't want to do it with 20 to 40 pounds around your middle because it's uh, it's not a fun way to be active and see the world trying to lug an extra you know, golden retriever around if you think about it. Yeah. So important. And lo love those stories, by the way, here's what I want to end on. If it's okay with you, um, doctor, I'm a big soccer player. I, I bought a semi-professional soccer team and my brother and I, we co-own it. I know a lot of you have sent me fun messages of just saying, that's cool that you're doing that. And, you know, if I told my clients go live awesome lives, but I didn't do it, then it'd be kind of hard to listen to me. So I, I played soccer in college and I'll, I'll joke with my partner and my friends. I'll say, I am not fun to be around when I'm injured. I am cranky. I'm worse than anyone you know who's hung hangry, which by the way is hungry and angry for those of you that don't know. And then I get my MRI and I go, hey, I now know the severity of my injury that I have my physical therapy and, and then I'm better. But I know there's other alternatives out there. And there's another reason I want to bring you on. You said we a few times. You said, hey, we do this. You know, We help with diet loss. We do stem cells. Tell my listeners about some of the things just in terms of taking care of their health that they may not have even considered and how you help people do this? Well, well if, all right. So a, a big part, oh, let's talk about pain, right? Because pain's a limiter. Knee, hip, back, neck pain. If you go to a pain clinic, they're going to inject cortisone or put you on medications. Hopefully not Oxycontin, but they still do it, right? Mm -hmm. um, pain clinics run by MDs in this country are basically drug-inducing people. That's what they do. They're drug dealers, right? And what if you found an MD who worked with the right um, visualization and the right ultrasound, the right um, ways of looking into the body, and instead of injecting cortisone or drugs, they injected stem cells into the joints? Well, that's what we do. We have an MD that has a pain clinic, pain management clinic, but he also takes, we've trained him to use these biologics that can actually heal tissue. Um, it's from purified amniotic fluid. It's from a healthy baby, healthy mom. And there's nothing like it to heal. We have half the NFL is using this nowadays. So there's, I guess the moral of the story is insurance doesn't cover this. You have to pay for it out of your pocket, but it, you have to find the right doctor. And we have people that fly into Boston all the time to, we're an hour North to have these treatments, um, but you have to find the right person. So we're, that's a great way is to take care of your joints in short, stay strong, take care of your joints, keep the weight down. Yeah. Love it. And let me be clear. You know, I haven't had this procedure done, of course, myself. So this is not me just saying, hey, guys, this is an advertisement. I want you to truly know that of all my clients that I work with right now, the happiest ones are just not in pain. Yes, can we get your finances in order? Of course, like invest well, do tax strategy, make sure that you're doing all the things so you know where's income going to come from. But once that stuff is in order, and maybe even before that, are you in pain? And I don't want you to be doing that slow travel or... or I don't want you to be doing anything where you're doing some volunteer work or part-time work or whatever it is that you want to do once you really have retired. And now you're going, Hey, I've got a few million bucks. I, I feel good um, in terms of my financial situation, but I don't actually feel good in my body. And so whether it's looking at stem cell therapies, which is most people overlook in, in my opinion, can be an awesome alternative for a lot of you. Sometimes you guys just need to make sure you're being more disciplined and it's not easy and so what can you do? Well, you can have a community, just like Dr. Donatello just said there. How do you have more friends that do this? How do you surround yourself with younger people? I know a lot of you have shared that Meetup has been really helpful. I brought that up to a lot of you before. Meetup, um, ClassPass, doing some of these different things that you just may not have known about before this. I want this, of course, to be the most helpful podcast for you when it comes to, yes, your finances, but also your health and fulfillment. So this has been really helpful, I think, for a lot of my listeners, doctors. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Is there anything at all, whether it be a story or a line or just something that you go, Ari, I want to make sure that, that your listeners hear this before we, we hop off? You know, I, I think don't overlook the toxic friends, right? And this is the hardest part of this whole talk because you're sitting there going, 
oh man, I know I should break up with that person, but how do I do it? And that's really hard, especially as you get older. Some of your people that aren't progressing the same the way you are, right? So if they can't share your wins, get rid of them. It's harsh, but life is too short to keep people around you. And and trade them in. Don't get rid of them, but trade them. Trade them for somebody that that is on your page, someone that you've met at Meetup, like you mentioned. Great idea. Yeah, wonderful. And don't die the richest person at your funeral. I love that line there. So um, wonderful. And once again, thank you for taking the time.